I'm going to tell you a story. This brother contacted me on Facebook. Y'all know that I don't really do the Facebook thing too much. But I, I talked to him for a little bit on Facebook. It was a true story. It happened recently. Okay? He's a white brother. He didn't like how I was protecting my people <laughs> on, on YouTube. He didn't like that too much. Right? He wanted to be, he thought, he thought he met somebody from the Butter Biscuit Brigade. That's what, he thought he met somebody from the Butter Biscuit Brigade. I'm not from the Butter Biscuit Brigade. I stand up. I represent black people. He wanted me to represent all the Muslims. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know the Muslims I represent? I represent the Muslims from Ahl Sunnah, inshallah. And I say, inshallah. You know what I'm saying? The Muslims who have my back, I have their back. Those are my brothers. The Muslims that have the back of my people, I have their back. You feel me? The Muslims who tell me they hate my own people can get the step in. I don't care how many of you you are. I don't care. You don't have to come to my channel and listen to me defend my people. How many, how many times I've defended other Muslims? How many times? Even on this channel, on this very channel, Muslims from other races and other countries so many times, and they got the nerve to come here and tell me that I'm a racist. But why do they do that? They do that. Why do they do that? To stop this, to stop this thing in my face from moving. They're trying to scare me with epithets and insults. That's why they do that. And if you are a scared to death Negro because of insults, then you need to check your relationship with Allah. So this brother, white brother, <laughs> right? White brother <laughs> contacts me on Facebook. He's all, you know, bent out of shape, you know? What happened to Allah wa Well, Allah wa you know? Don't you, what happened to loving, the sake, loving for the sake of Allah and hating for the sake of Allah? And what's, what's all this black supremacy? Black supremacy and, you know what I mean? Black unity, it should be Muslim unity, Islamic unity. You see, you see, when it comes to black folk, family, for us, it's intersectionalism. You understand? Only for black people, it's intersectionalism. What do you mean? It means that our problems belong to everybody. But when we're talking about the Palestinians, we're only talking about the Palestinians. When we're talking about the Syrians, we're only talking about the Syrians. When we're talking about Rohingya, we're only talking about Rohingya. When we're talking about black people, we're talking about everybody. You feel me? Intersectionalism. So... I'm being cordial with the brother. You know, you know, like me, I'll, I'll, there's a reason why I'm telling you this story, right? So let's just, let me just get to it. I'm being cordial with the brother. I'm talking back and forth or whatever. He's getting angry. Well, he's not getting, he's getting emotional. You feel me? So I told him about slavery going on in Libya today, today, today. Slavery in the Gulf today. But this slavery in Libya, what is it? It's human trafficking. They're kidnapping Muslims, selling them as slaves. And Muslim women, black Muslim women, selling them as prostitutes in Libya today. And I sent him a video, okay, of a woman telling her story, how she's seeing these men, Libyan men, in rooms with all naked girls, 12, 13, 14, 15, having sex with them. She's telling the story, okay? Excuse me if your children are here, but this, I mean, but I'm trying to be as, as, as respectful as possible. She's telling the story, okay? These Libyan men would be sleeping with them and raping them, obviously, you know? And they would force them into prostitution. And the man who kidnapped them, right? Any any woman that he slept with, those women would end up being bedwetters. She's telling the story, okay? And how the Libyans, okay? Not only would they get these girls pregnant because they were not using condoms while they're doing this prostitution. They were not paying them, okay? But they were giving them diseases. And these black African women were dying, dying, okay? Muslim women were dying in these brothels. She's telling the story. She's telling, 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 telling. All these details, all these details. You know what this brother told me? This white brother? You know what he told me? Why did you send me this video of this Christian lady not wearing hijab? That's what he told me. That's what he told me. They don't have a single thing to say about any oppression against you. They have things to say when you fight against your oppression. That's it. So when you find Muslims like this, these are not your brothers. You understand? Even with that beard and that sujood mark and that thumb and whatever, and just alhamdulillah, we're all brothers. Uh, this man is your brother. This man, he had nothing to say about the women getting kidnapped. He had nothing to say about these Muslim women getting raped, losing their lives. He saw that even Muslim parents in that interview, the only criticism he had was for the Christian woman not wearing hijab, telling that story. This is what you're dealing with, black people. This is what you're dealing with. You have to understand how the world sees you. And when you understand that, the mind control just breaks. That's the first thing you got to understand. Walaikum salam, bro. Walaikum salam, Hassan. This religion, Islam, 
It's not a birthright. It's a blessing. You understand? Number one point of order in Islam is a fight injustice. You don't fight the oppressed. You don't fight the oppressors. And whoever's in your way, fighting, fighting on the side of the oppressors, is not your brother. It's not your brother.